functions, domain, and range. So first let's go over functions and relations. A relation shows any relationship between two quantities. So whatever is on your x-axis, whatever values you have, there's some relationship between those values and your y values. A function is a special type of relation where each domain is paired with only one range. So let's go over those vocabulary words, domain and range. What are they? What is domain? Domain is your set of all x values. Range is your set of all y values. So now let's reread that previous statement. A function is a special type of relation where each domain, each x value, is paired with only one range, each y value. So now let's go over these examples right here. Determine if each set of ordered pairs and each graph is a function. So in numbers one and number two, numbers one and two, we're gonna look at the x values. If you have any repeating x values, it's not a function. So in number one, I've got this list of ordered pairs, so I'm just gonna look at all of my x values. One, three, two, seven. Do any of these x values repeat? No, so is it a function? Yes. Oh, goodness, that does not say yes. This says yes, yes. Emphatically, that's an emphatic yes. And problem number two, I have, and it just looks a little different than you may see, but I like incorporating these types of examples in Algebra 2 because this might be how you see it in a textbook in college. So I have these three ordered pairs, and as you can see, all of the x values are the same. Now you see the y values are a, b, and c. So what does that mean? That just means that Whatever numbers they are, they're not the same, right? Because A is a number, B is a different number, and C is a different number. So it doesn't matter what those Y values are. This is just showing you that all of the X values are the same. So is it a function? No, it's not. So now let's look at problem number three. Now we have a graph. So you may remember how do you determine if a relation is a function? You can use the vertical line test. So Take your pen or your pencil, place it vertical, and scan it across your graph to the right. If you have any, if it overlaps, like if I have something that maybe looked like this, my vertical line would overlap, that would show me that there are repeating x values in this specific relation. But if you do that in this graph, you can see that there's no overlap when you take your vertical line across your graph. Now, I'm going to point out this right here. This right here, that vertical line, notice there's a hole in the graph up top, but in the graph down bottom, it's filled in. That is completely okay. What is it? that? So there's a hole right here, and it's filled in right here. It's still a function because of that. If this were filled in up here, there would be two x values. Um, and so it would not be a function. There would be a repeating x value, but because there's a hole up there, it is in fact a function. Now, number four, it's an oval. Is it a function? Absolutely not. Let's go on to domain and range. So how can we write domain and range? Domain and range, domain is your set of all x values. Range is your set of all y values. So if I have a number line right here, how can I express this information as an inequality? Well, I know that my numbers range from negative four to five, and I include the point at negative four. So I can write this as an inequality. Let's just use x values, so your domain. I know that x is less than five, and it's less than five because there's an open dot right here at five, but it's greater than, no, I read backwards when I write it this way, it's greater than or equal to negative four. So my interval runs from negative four to five and I'm including the point at negative four. That's why that's that, that's this symbol right here. And I read it backwards, x is greater than or equal to negative four. Now, how do we write this as an interval? I love interval notation in algebra two because my interval runs from negative four to five. Am I including negative four? Yes, so do I use brackets or parentheses? Brackets, am I including the point at five? No, so do I use brackets or parentheses? 
parentheses. All right, let's move on to the next part. Determine the domain and range of each relation. Write an interval notation if necessary, then determine if it's a function. So let's look at number five. We're asked to write our domain range and then determine if it's a function. Now this is in mapping notation. I don't have numbers here. Again, I like to use these types of examples in Algebra 2. So by domain, is just your set of all x values. And I'm going to list them out. So I'm going to write in set or roster notation, A, B, C, and D. And I just separate them by commas and I put these fancy little squiggly brackets on the end. And then what's my range? Again, we have a list, lowercase a, b, c. Again, representing different numbers. Is this a function? No. How do you know that it's not a function? Because I have repeating range values for this domain. So it is not a function. Let's look at number six. What's our domain? We're going to write our domain from least to greatest. Same thing we're going to do with our range, and we only have a table of values with one, two, three, four, five, six ordered pairs. So when I write from least to greatest, I see right here that I have repeating x values, one set of repeating x values, and I'm going to write from least to greatest. So the smallest number is negative six, and then what's next? Zero, then two, then four, and even though I have repeating x values, I don't need to write it twice when I'm listing my domain. And six. And now let's look at the range. The range from least to greatest is, and I have repeating y values as well, that's okay, negative one, one, three, four, then five. And because I have repeating x values, is it a function? No, it is not. So let's move on to the next set. Number seven. Number seven is just a bunch of dots on my coordinate plane. And I'm going to zoom in here if I can. I'm using a little bit of a different program than I normally use. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to actually write the ordered pairs for, or the ordered pair for each dot. So let's go from left to right. I'm going to start with this most leftist dot here, if that makes sense. So the ordered pair for that point is negative six, zero. And then the next one moving to the right is negative two, two. And then down here in our fourth quadrant, it's four, negative three. And then back in the first quadrant, this one up here is five, three. And this one is seven, one. So I like doing that because when I'm listing my domain, I'm going to look at all the x values. So let's see if I can change the color up here. So let's look at all the x values. So I've got negative 6, negative 2, 4, 5, and 7. That's my domain. Negative 6, negative 2, 4, 5, and 7. And then my range. I'm going to change colors again. The range is your set of all y values, and I'm going to list from least to greatest, so I'm actually going to go from bottom to top. So my smallest va y value is going to be negative 3, and then what? 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. Do I have any repeating x values? I don't, so is it a function? Yes, this is a function. Number 8. So now we've got a continuous graph. This continues. There are no gaps, holes, or breaks. So let's move on over to number eight. In number eight, this is a continuous graph. So let's list our domain. Because it continues, we're going to have an interval. So we're not just going to have numbers that we list out in set or roster notation. We're going to be writing an interval and we're going to write it in interval notation. So what I like to do is my most leftist point over here is this point right here. The ordered pair for that point is negative 8, 7. And then my most rightest point is right here. The ordered pair for that is 9, 2. So what's my domain? My domain is everything from negative 8 to positive 9. Am I including the point at negative 8? No, there's a hole there, parentheses. 
Am I including the point at negative 9? Yes. There's a filled in dot there. It's including, so we use brackets. So now let's move on to our range. When we're talking about our range, we're talking about how low to how high. So our lowest point is down here. What's the ordered pair for that point? 5, negative 6. Our highest point is up here where there's a hole at, 8, negative, or 8, positive 7. Negative 8, positive 7. So when we write our range, we're looking at our y values. This is actually the only time when we're describing functions where we're going to use our y values. So our lowest point is at negative 6, and our highest point is at positive 7. I'm looking at those y values, negative 6 to positive 7. Am I including the point when y is negative 6? Yes. Brackets. Am I including the point when y is 7? No, there's a hole there, so parentheses. Is this a function? Yes, it is. Let's move on to number 9. Okay, number 9. Okay, in problem number nine, again, I have a continuous graph. So my domain, because I have these arrows on the end where it's going all the way that way and all the way this way, my domain is actually all real numbers. But if I write it in interval notation, it's going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Do we use parentheses or brackets when we're talking about infinity? Parentheses. And then because there are arrows on the end, now these points right here always throw students off. Oh, there's my low point, there's my high point. Well, there's arrows on the end. If there's arrows on the end, that means this graph is going to go that way forever and ever and ever and down and out forever and ever and ever that way. So my range is actually from negative infinity to positive infinity as well. Is this a function? Yes, it is. Let's move on to number 10. On number 10, Let's move on. Number 10. So number in number 10, I have these two parts of this graph. And what I'm going to do is actually look at my most leftist point, and I'm going to write that as an ordered pair on my graph. So my most leftist point, I don't know if that's grammatically correct, is negative 8, negative 3. Negative 8, negative 3. And then, well, do I have a rightest point, if that makes any sense? A point that's furthest to the right? I don't because there's an arrow right here, which means it's going to go down and out forever and ever and ever and ever. So what's this highest point up here, this point where there's a hole? What's the ordered pair for that point? It's 3, 6. Okay, now let's kind of dissect this and go through this. Our domain is how far left to how far right our graph goes. It's our set of all x values. That's why I say left to right because that's the axis that runs from left to right, our x-axis. So our most leftist point is negative 8, right there. That's the x value. So negative 8. And then it's going to continue, and as you can see, even though I have a hole up here, it continues to right here, and it stops right here, but I've got this piece of my graph up here that's continuing. So it's actually going to continue forever and ever and ever and ever and ever all the way to infinity. Now, am I including the point at negative 8? I am. Am I including the point or oh, am I including the point at infinity? Do we use parentheses or brackets for infinity? Parentheses. So now let's move on to range. For range, it's how far low to how far high. Now, a lot of students, this is going to trip you up again. You're going to think, oh, that's our lowest point. It's at negative 3. Is it the lowest point? It's not because this is going to go down and out forever and ever and ever and ever. We write our range from low to high. So actually, our lowest point is at negative infinity, and our highest point is at, right here, this hole, positive 6. Are we including positive 6? No, we've got parentheses there. Parentheses are brackets at negative infinity. Parentheses, is this a function? This part right here, right here, makes this not a function. 
Okay, it would not pass the vertical line test. This is not a function. And that concludes your notes over your review over functions, domain, and range. I hope it was helpful. Good luck.